In this video, we'll develop a literature search strategy for a systematic review. We'll translate this research question into a search strategy for the PubMed database. A search strategy is an organized structure of words and statements entered into a search box. It gives search directions to a database. The search strategy conveys the research question and specifies the characteristics of a relevant result. A search strategy comprises six building blocks, search modes, terms, operators, field searches, special operators, and search filters. Let's review each one. Search modes include two ways of searching. The text word search, which is a search for terms in a publication's title, abstract, and other elements. It's a free text search. Next is the controlled vocabulary search, which finds publications assigned a specific controlled vocabulary term. To conduct a comprehensive search, use both modes together. The next building block is the search terms. To describe research ideas, use two types of terminology. Text words, which are the words that may appear in a publication's text, and controlled vocabulary, which are the standardized terms assigned to publications to indicate the topics covered. The third building block is search operators. They connect search terms into logical relationships and include the OR, AND, parentheses, double quotation marks, and truncation operators. Use the OR operator to connect similar terms, such as synonyms and closely related concepts. The search finds results with any single term, a combination of terms, or all of the terms. Use the AND operator to connect different concepts. The search finds results that contain all of the terms. Next, use parentheses to group search terms into a logical set. A logical set is a collection of different words that represent a distinct category of concepts. There are two primary uses of parentheses. First, combine one logical set of terms with a different set of terms. Use parentheses to enclose and keep the sets separate. For example, this search combines a logical set of pets, cats or dogs, with a set of activities, nap or play. The second use of parentheses is to conduct a nested search, a search within a search. For instance, here's a nested search for a third animal, backyard and chicken, within the search for pets. Enclose nested searches in parentheses. The next operator is double quotation marks. Use this to search for a precise phrase. When an individual concept consists of a group of words, such as stem cell transplantation, enclose the phrase in double quotation marks. Results will have the terms in the same order and no other words between them. It's a precise search. Lastly, use the truncation operator to search for different possible endings of a word stem. Add the truncation symbol to the end of a stem, which is the asterisk symbol in many databases. For example, health followed by an asterisk can retrieve the following terms starting with health. Moving on to the next building block, field searches. A database divides its records into smaller parts known as fields. Each field contains specific information like a publication's title, abstract, keywords, or other attributes. A field search instructs the database to only search particular fields of a, of a record. To indicate a field search, add a tag to the search term, usually at the end. For example, this is a PubMed search to find publications with the word heart in the title field. The next building block is special search operators. They're special because they work in some databases, not all. First, there's the wildcard operator. It's a placeholder to retrieve different character possibilities in a word. There are wildcard options to represent a single character or zero or one characters. The second special operator conducts a proximity search, which finds one word occurring within a specific distance of another word. 
The wildcard and proximity search operators do not work in PubMed. However, Embase and CINAHL databases permit their use. The final building block is filters, which limit search results to a particular category of publications. When conducting a systematic review, avoid built-in database filters. In general, they pose risks of bias and error. On the other hand, search filters can be useful in a systematic review. They are predefined search statements that find publications meeting research parameters like study design type, topic focus, or other features. Here's an example of a search filter. This set retrieves publications that are randomized controlled trials. In review, there are six building blocks for search strategy development. If you're unfamiliar with any of these elements, please watch the corresponding video for a fuller explanation. Check the description box for a link to the video playlist. Let's explore how to develop a search strategy. In this demonstration, we'll find research literature to answer the following question. For patients with a history of heart attacks, is aspirin more effective than other antiplatelet aggregators in preventing further heart attacks? We'll search the PubMed database and follow these strategy development procedures. Concentrate on essential concepts, compile search terms, divide the search, capture different word forms, connect similar terms, define logical sets, indicate phrases, indicate field searches, bundle search results and find the overlap, add a search filter, and review the search results and revise the strategy. Let's start. Step one, concentrate on the essential concepts of the research question. Select two or three concepts for focus. We run a broader search and get a bigger picture of the research space when we start with fewer ideas. For therapy research questions, focus on the problem, patient, and intervention concepts. In our question, the problem is heart attacks and the intervention is aspirin. Step two, compile search terms. For each concept, collect its different terminology, including text words and controlled vocabulary. Searching with an assortment of terms minimizes the risk of missing out on relevant publications. In a previous video, we explored a range of techniques for generating search terms. Using these techniques, I generated the following search terms for our problem and intervention concepts. For text words, I include lay and medical terms such as heart attack and myocardial infarction, plural terms like heart attacks and myocardial infarctions, different word forms such as infarct and infarction, plus abbreviations for the condition and the drug. Let's switch gears and review the controlled vocabulary. MESH is the controlled vocabulary system in PubMed. For the heart attack concept, the MESH term is myocardial infarction, and for aspirin, it's the same term. To identify MESH terms, run a preliminary PubMed search and examine the MESH assigned to relevant results. Alternatively, use the MESH database to search for a matching term. Observe that myocardial infarction appears twice in both the text word and controlled vocabulary searches. It's wise to include the MESH terms in the text word search. New publications may not have MESH terms assigned yet and we can compensate for the omission through this text word search. Step three, divide the search. A search strategy can have different structures. One option is the continuous search statement structure. The strategy fits in a single line and it's easy to copy and paste into a search box. For example, here's the search for pets and activities from earlier. The continuous format requires parentheses for combining different logical sets and conducting nested searches. The formatting is complicated. It's easy to miss a parenthesis 
and it's difficult to detect errors in a long text. The second option divides the search into multiple shorter searches. Here's an example. Option 2 is logically equivalent to option 1. The difference is that we divide the concepts across multiple searches, with each search representing a distinct idea. In line number 5, we combine the separate searches for the overall results. Observe that parentheses are unnecessary since no line combines different groups of terms or conducts a nested search. The divided search can facilitate error detection, revision, and organization due to its smaller components. Here's a template for dividing a search. Let's examine each element line by line. Begin by searching for the problem concept using separate text word and controlled vocabulary searches. Likewise, search for the intervention concept in two parts. Afterwards, bundle the problem search results by combining the two sets and deduplicating records. And repeat for the intervention search results. Lastly, find the overlap between the problem and intervention searches. The final results will possess both the problem and the intervention terms. This template is one option for a divided search. Adapt the structure to work with your question or style. The key is conducting multiple searches with shorter statements. Here's the search template in a table format. I entered our search terms to the corresponding concept, either problem or intervention, and I've separated the terms between text words and controlled vocabulary. Step 4. Capture different word forms using search operators for truncation, wildcard, and proximity searching. Begin with a truncation search to retrieve the different possible endings of a word stem. In PubMed, add the asterisk symbol to the end of the stem. For example, myocardial infarct followed by an asterisk is a truncation search that captures the following terms. Our strategy has terms that share a common word stem. We can replace multiple terms with a single truncation search. Truncation searches compress the strategy and provide the additional benefit of retrieving terms we may have overlooked. We may also consider the wildcard and proximity search operators to capture different word forms. However, these operators do not work in PubMed, so we'll skip them in this video. A reminder that the Embase and Synod databases do permit their use. Step 5. Connect similar terms. Use the OR operator to join different expressions of the same concept as well as closely related concepts. Here's the search strategy connecting similar terms with the OR operator. The search results will have any combination of these terms. Step 6. Define logical sets. Enclose a group of terms in parentheses when you need to combine a logical set of terms with a different set. A logical set represents a distinct category of concepts. Additionally, use parentheses to conduct a nested search, which is a search within a search. Let's check whether our strategy needs parentheses. First, are we combining one logical set of terms with a different concept? In our case, no. Each search is for a distinct concept. We are not combining different ideas in a single search. Second, are we conducting a nested search? In our case, there are no searches within a search. But suppose we did have a nested search, it would look like this. In this hypothetical example, I include studies on necrosis of the myocardium along with my heart attack search. I add the nested search using the OR operator and enclose it in parentheses. Fortunately, our case is straightforward. We do not need parentheses to define logical sets since each search is for a distinct concept. Step 7. Indicate phrases. 
examine the search terms for phrases, which are groups of words that express an individual concept. In our strategy, phrases include heart attack, myocardial infarction, and so forth. To search for a phrase, enclose the terms in double quotation marks. With this formatting, the search will retrieve the precise phrase. Results will have the terms in the same order and no other words between them. Here's the search strategy. I enclosed all phrases in double quotation marks. Note that individual terms like aspirin do not need quotation marks. Step 8. Indicate field searches. A field search instructs the database to only search specific parts of a publication record. Field searches contribute to search reproducibility, an essential characteristic of systematic reviews. Without field searches, a database may automatically add or modify terms to optimize the search. For instance, PubMed may insert different spellings, variant word forms, and mesh terms into the search. These automatic adjustments restrict reproducibility. There are different types of field searches for text words and controlled vocabulary. And the PubMed database has several options for text word searching, the text words and the title abstract field search. This table differentiates the field searches for text words in PubMed. First is the text words field search. It will inspect the title, abstract, mesh terms, and other fields of publications. Use this option to search broadly. By contrast, the title abstract field search only examines the title, abstract, and keywords of publications. This option gives a narrower, more focused search, but it runs a higher risk of missing out on relevant works. To indicate a field search, add a search tag to the end of a term. As shown in the examples, this tag comprises a field code in square brackets. Let's switch gears to the field search for controlled vocabulary in PubMed. There's only one option, the mesh term search. Add the mesh tag to the end of the controlled vocabulary term. Here's our search strategy. I added the search tag for the text words field search at the end of each text word. I chose a text word search rather than the title abstract option to start with a broader search. Afterwards, I added the search tag for the mesh field search at the end of each mesh term. Step 9. Bundle search results and find the overlap. Bundle search results by concept. First, combine the text word and controlled vocabulary search results for the problem concept, and do the same for the intervention search results. Afterwards, combine the two sets to find the overlapping results, which are publications that contain a combination of the problem and intervention terms. Here's the search strategy. Line 5 bundles the problem concept search results. In PubMed, we can designate a set of results with a pound sign and the search history number. Number 1 represents the text word search in line 1, and number 2 represents the controlled vocabulary search in line 2. Use the OR operator, which pools and deduplicates records. In a similar vein, bundle the intervention concept search results. Afterwards, find the overlap between the problem and intervention sets by combining them with the AND operator. The final results are publications that contain a combination of the heart attack and aspirin terms. The next step is an optional one. If appropriate, add a search filter. A search filter finds publications that meet a specific research parameter. Our case on aspirin for heart attack prevention is a therapy research question. The randomized controlled trial is a study design that generates a high level of evidence for this type of question. Therefore, we could add a search filter to focus on publications with this study design. To find search filters, turn to organizations like these. They provide directories to search filters for a range of parameters. Here's a search filter for randomized controlled trials in the PubMed database. 
run each search statement in PubMed one line at a time. Back to our search strategy. I added the randomized controlled trials search filter in lines 8 through 18. And then in line 19, we find the overlap between the initial search results of line number 7 and the randomized controlled trial publications of number 18, combining the two sets with the AND operator. The final results are publications that contain our search terms and have a randomized controlled trial design. We did it. We developed a draft search strategy. Let's review the search. We began by searching for the problem and intervention concepts using separate text word and controlled vocabulary searches. We used truncation searches to capture different word forms and joined similar terms with the OR operator. We did not need parentheses to define logical sets since each search represents a distinct concept and there are no nested searches. We enclose enclosed phrases in double quotation marks. And then we added the appropriate field search tags to the end of every text word and controlled vocabulary term. Next, we bundled the search results for the separate problem and intervention searches. Afterwards, we found the overlap between the problem and intervention sets. We then took the optional step of adding a search filter to retrieve randomized controlled trials since this study design generates a high level of evidence for therapy research questions. Lastly, we found the overlap between the initial search results and the randomized controlled trials. The final results contain our search terms and have a randomized controlled trial design. A word of caution, it's advisable to start your search without search filters. We want to begin with a broad search to avoid the risk of inadvertently excluding relevant results. However, if search result volume is beyond your screening capacity, then search filters are beneficial. Step 10. Review and revise. Run a pilot search of the draft strategy. Review the preliminary results. Revise the strategy to improve search relevance, and then repeat the process. When searching the PubMed database, use the Advanced Search Builder. In the query box, run each search statement one line at a time. At the bottom, there's a search history which helps to combine the searches. When reviewing search results, examine the following issues. First, check for errors. Are there notifications of incorrect syntax? Are there zero results for a search term? And is the volume of results higher or lower than expected? Second, identify new terminology. Review titles, abstracts, and possibly full text articles to gather alternative terms and expressions to use in the search. Third, check whether the strategy retrieves known studies. If you have research already identified as relevant to the review, the search should capture those studies. Lastly, evaluate the relevance of search results. Do the publications address the research question? Are the results missing essential concepts? Are the results too specialized or are they too general? After reviewing results, revise the strategy to improve search relevance. For error messages and unexpected results, check the spelling of the terms correct errors in search operator use and syntax, and verify that controlled vocabulary terms are appropriate to the topic. If you identify synonyms or different expressions, add the new terms to the corresponding concept using the OR operator. If known studies are missing from the results, add search terms that will capture these works. Improving search relevance is like using a microscope. You could zoom out to conduct a broader search for more general results, or zoom in for a narrower search and greater focus. To broaden the search, try the following revisions. Replace search terms with more general concepts or terms. Add synonyms, alternative expressions, and closely related concepts to the strategy. And try removing non-essential concepts. 
however, carefully evaluate its impact on search relevance. On the other hand, to narrow the search, replace search terms with more specific concepts or terms. Add supplemental ideas from the research question to focus the search on a subtopic. Lastly, try a search filter to limit results to a research parameter like study design. In this video, we developed a draft search strategy. To finalize the search, proceed with several activities. The first is iteration. Test and revise the strategy. Repeat the cycle to optimize search relevance. Revisions to the search strategy may occur at any stage of the review, even during data analysis. You might return to search for additional publications. Another activity is peer review. Share the draft strategy and search results with peer researchers for feedback. Finally, there's translation. Search strategies are database specific. When proceeding to a different database, it's essential to translate the syntax, search functions, and controlled vocabulary to the new system. In summary, to conduct a comprehensive literature search in a systematic review, develop a search strategy that reflects the question and specify the words a relevant result should contain. Search strategy development is a design process comprising the following building blocks. To assemble these elements into a strategy, here are the recommended procedures. And to finalize the search, use iteration, testing and revising the strategy repeatedly, conduct peer review, and translate the strategy when proceeding to a new database.